So in this video, I'm going to give an overview of how we can solve second order ODEs that have constant coefficients. So I'm not going to go into any significant detail of where this process comes from. It's just going to be the recap of the general steps that you can take. So the types of equations that we're going to be solving with this method should be able to be written like this. So what we see is that we have like an A, a B and a C um, sitting out the front of each of our terms on the left hand side. These are the constant coefficients that I'm referring to. We can also see that this is a second order equation, noting that the highest derivative, so second here, is what defines the order of the equation. The other thing um, in terms of terminology, we've got ODE, that means ordinary differential equation. Um, and an ordinary differential equation just means that we're only taking derivatives with respect to one variable. So in this case, it's with respect to t for any time we're taking a derivative. If we had more than one variable that we were taking, if we had more than one variable that we were taking derivatives with respect to, then that would be a partial differential equation, and we would not be using this method to solve. All right, so the only other thing to mention um, is that the right-hand side here can be any function of t. Okay, so let's run through this process um, for a solution. Um, I've summarized it into three main steps. So the first thing we need to do is solve for the homogeneous solution to the equation. So when we talk about a homogeneous solution, all we mean is that the right-hand side, or the q of t, has to be equal to zero. Okay, that's all it means. So if we put 0 in up here, what we can do then is find the roots of the characteristic equation, and we can do that using the quadratic formula. So the characteristic equation is just kind of formed from this when the right-hand side is 0. All that we do is we leave the a out the front, um, and we replace any derivative that we have. Um, we're going to introduce a variable r, and we give it the power according to what the um, number of derivatives is. So in this case, it's a second derivative, so we write this as r squared. For this one, the b stays out the front, and we're going to write this as r to the power of 1, since it's a first derivative. And then we have um, plus c, and this doesn't have any derivatives, so we just leave the c on its own. And remember, we've replaced this with 0. So this here is the characteristic equation. And we can see it's just like a quadratic. So that's why we can use the quadratic uh, formula in order to solve it. So remember the quadratic formula? It would solve for the unknown, which is r, and it's the negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, this one here. So depending on uh, what the values are for a, b, and c, which of course came from those constant coefficients, um, there's three cases that can kind of happen. So the first case is where we have real and distinct roots that fall out of the quadratic equation. So by that we mean real numbers, okay, no imaginary bits, and they're going to be different from each other, that's the distinct. So the next case that could possibly happen is we end up with real but repeated roots. So that means that the two um, solutions to this equation um, end up being the same as each other and they're real numbers again. The last case that um, can happen is we end up with complex solutions. So that means we have imaginary numbers uh, falling out in our solution. And these can be referred to as like complex conjugates. It should look something like this. So you'll have a real component plus or minus the imaginary number i um, times by that imaginary component b. So depending on which um, case you end up out of your quadratic equation, um, you need to select the form of the homo homogeneous solution um, based on that case. Okay, And that's what this table is showing in the second column. So depending on which um, type you had, this is the solution for y of h, okay, the homogeneous um, part. So these ones here are going to satisfy the equation when q of t is equal to 0. So it's just a matter of picking the appropriate form, and then you should be able to substitute in um, the r1 and r2 values here, um, or the a and b values um, if you have this case. Uh, the c1s and the c2s you won't know um, unless you have conditions that we'll deal with at the end. Alright, so the next step then is to look for the particular solution. So this is where we go back and say, okay, 
Q of T isn't necessarily zero, um, it's potentially something else. Okay, if Q of T was actually zero for you, for your ODE, then you can kind of just skip over this step because the particular solution will just be zero as well. Okay, so you don't really need to do it. But let's assume that Q of T is actually um, an equation um, in time. So what we need to do then is assume what the particular solution YP actually is. And it's going to be based on this guessing table that I've um, copied across here. So what we do is we look at what Q of T is, and it should follow one of these kind of general forms, hopefully. So based on that, what we can do is then guess what Y of P should actually look like. So for example, if Q of T was equal to just a constant, so say the number three, then what we would do is assume Y of P, all right, based on this case here of it just being a constant, um, we'd assume Y P was equal to B. All right, some um, constant that we need to then solve for. Um, another example might be if um, the right-hand side here was equal to cos of 3t, then we'd say, okay, that kind of looks like this one here, cos of bt. So we would assume this for the solution of yp. And the little b in here, if it was 3 in my example, then you could copy it across into uh, what's inside the brackets on your yp as well. Then there would be 2 um, constants a and b that you would need to solve for okay so that's what that is so once you've assumed this y of p solution all you need to do is take some derivatives of it and sub it back up in here all right so that's what this bit is substituting y of p into the left hand side of the non homogeneous ode so that's where we're considering q of t to actually be a function and we need to solve for those constants so the a's the big b's here um, that's what we're going to be looking for all right, so once we've got an answer then for y of p, the last bit is to bring it all together and solve for the overall solution. So overall, y is equal to the solution from the homogeneous section that you will have drawn down plus yp, all right, this particular solution that we can draw down. Once we've written out the equation in full, it's just a matter of applying your conditions in order to find whatever constants are remaining within that solution. And they're gonna be the ones that were appearing um, up here, the C1 and C2. So typically you'll be given two conditions to work with in order to find the two um, constants that you typically have um, appearing in that final solution or overall solution. So that's pretty much all there is um, in terms of this process and I'll do a couple of example videos um, applying it to some actual applications. So that's all there is.